All right, folks, back in the boss man show in front of the show. UT Martin, Scott Hawks head coach Anthony Stewart with me out of OVC. Coach Stewart, good to see you, man. Good to talk to you. Good to see you, man. Always, I look forward to talking to you every every year. And, uh, you know, it's good to be seen with everything going on. It's good to be seen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, Coach, for you guys, man, uh, I know you, you had the tournament the week before everything kind of shut down. I know it was my birthday, March 11th, where everything kind of went straight to you-know-what. You know, I'm at the Hawks game and get text messages season we suspended. So, for your guys, it's probably on spring break. So, how was that first that March 11th week and going from being on campus to being virtual? And how was that for you and your staff and your players, Coach? It, it, it was different. It was really different. It was something that we've never, obviously, none of us have experienced before. Uh, so um, it was uncharted territory. You don't really uh, know what to do. It's something, you know, doctors and scientists, you know, obviously haven't uh, come up with a cure or an antidote. So, you know, it was scary in a sense, too, because you don't really know what you're dealing with. Most and so uh, all you can do is just try to self-educate yourself and learn as much as you can about that virus uh, so you can do anything and everything uh, that I could do because it, it, here's the thing is that you know boss man is that you know I'm, I'm, I'm I have people's children under my care and so you know when you have other people's children under your care and you have a, a epidemic going on that's a serious thing you know, you're dealing not only with your own players, their parents and loved ones. Uh, you don't really know what to tell them and just trying to gather as much information as you can. And also, you know, making sure they're good. Yes, you know, indeed. their parents and loved ones are good where they are because some of these kids don't have the resources or the know-how or the ways to take care of things like we do here. So it was, it was it was about three or four fold what, what was going on. So, but we've made it through it, and uh, we're just you know, we're moving on. Model, and, and I know for you having academic advisor, your assistant coaches, kind of keeping the young men motivated in the classroom because when they at your home, home, your own devices, you, you might miss class and you won't go get punished by running the laps for missing class when you're at home. So, how does it kind of get your young men to go there and learn on virtually? and keeping their grades up. I know you can see via the Blackboard app what they're doing, but how was that for you and your staff and your assistants to get those young men through that semester? You know, it, it was business as usual. One thing about, we don't, I don't play that. We don't play, you know, uh, academic uh, failure here. You know, we're on top of it. Uh, nothing really changed except the vehicle by which we did work. We did obviously more virtual stuff, online things, but the checks and balances were there. We got in, you know, we, we, we touched base with them virtually multiple times a day. Um, these are things we do whether or not there's an act, uh, epidemic or not because they are here. Uh, they're going to receive a degree, a meaningful degree, and they're here to learn, okay? And so uh, basketball is just something that they do. It's not who they are. And so that's important to me. And we've talked about this. So Nothing changed as far as our approach to academics, but the vehicle by which we delivered the finished academic product, that, that's the only thing that changed. Most definitely. I, I know uh, young men, you know, having you as a coach, you hold them accountable on and off the court. So I knew they would be <laughs> right in line with you, Coach. I know you take care of that on every end of you, you treat them as what they are, student athletes, not just an athlete. So you you really believe in that. I know that about you. So I know you're going to be okay in that regard for sure. Yeah, no no question. And like I tell my, uh, my players, and uh, it's real simple here. I don't have a whole lot of rules. But anything that you cannot do at a corporate job or in a corporate environment or in a corporate structure, you can't do here in my program. So you will be prepared to have a real job uh, when you leave here. Most definitely. And coach, uh, strict conditioning wise, I know it was hard for them young men being back home. They couldn't work out or they couldn't, couldn't go to gym. So how would you approach keeping the young men semi in shape, doing things on Zoom and group texts and sending them workouts? How was that for you guys over the spring and summer here? The only thing I, I mostly uh, tried to do was just stimulate their minds. 
uh, too, you know, a, a lot of times we're too worried about the physical aspect of this, you know, and sometimes they just need it, you know, hey, we just need to, make, hey, how you guys doing? How's your day? How are your people? How are your friends? Okay, and so if they were following, which majority of our guys were, instructions and protocol, they needed to be in the, in the house. They needed to quarantine. A lot of them had curfews. So a lot of these people's environment changed as to where they kind of got uh, cabin fever. And so Most definitely. they couldn't go here, they couldn't go there. So you had to make sure they stim you stimulated their minds uh, with some things. The physical going to be okay. We're going to get to that. They've been playing basketball their life. Make sure that they're mentally, mentally stable. They're doing well. Uh, we the, the only basketball stuff we we did or gave them was so, uh, some defensive philosophies. Watch the little film, and then you know I'll I'll get with y'all when y'all get back. I just want you to be healthy. I want your family to be healthy, and I want everybody to be safe. That's it. Most definitely. And speaking of mentally, you know, what's going on in our country, it's been happening over this pandemic with social injustices. How did you all approach that topic? I know a lot of coaches tell me, tell me about it, but you use the Zooms to educate their young men about getting registered to vote, to teach them about the situation going on in the country. So how did you all use that platform as well to kind of get those young men involved in the civics and understanding what goes on between us, blacks, whites, and Latinos, and non-black, whites, and Latinos and in this country here? Well, you know, my, my players had a head start. And so, and I'm not knocking anybody's program, but we're registering to vote regardless if there's a presidential election. That's the first thing our guys do when they get here. Uh, you know, everybody's jumping on the bandwagon uh, to vote for president. But in the meantime, uh, there are senators and, and, and congressmen and people at the state level and the city level. They're the ones who make the laws. Most definitely. And so, like, don't get it twisted in that thinking you just need to get involved because you don't like something that's happening now with the president. You don't like something that's happening now with the government. This is a continual thing. Yes, indeed. And so, you know, my, like I said, my guys have a uh, head start in the fact that, you know, they don't, they, they're not here playing for a, a black coach. They're playing for a black man. And yes, so, indeed. the apparent difference between the two. You got that right, Coach, and I feel like that's something we've been missing. You know, for me, you know, my parents were in civics. I was taught about voting at a young age, right? So I've known, I always know that state, local is what matters the most. Federal is, is important, but what affects you every day is what's happening locally in state. And, you know, just like here in Georgia, with the you probably heard about the mask mandate issue with our mayor and the governor of Georgia, right? That's, <laughs> had somebody else won, that wouldn't be a problem. Because, you know, we're not, we're out and we're still here out of control in Atlanta. So, like you said, as an example, right here in Atlanta, Georgia, of how state and local miles more than that federal does, and how they affects exactly. your day-to-day -day 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 life every every day. It, 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 it really does. And, you know, when, you know I've got a 12-year uh, uh, corporate uh, career in that I used to always I used to chuckle in that when, you know, the big boss man or the, the owner of the company, the a vice, the president or vice president come into town. Now everybody's straightening up their desk and they're changing their clothes and they're, they're working harder. And they're like, well, hey, hey, Anthony, why, why, you ain't, why you ain't moving no fuck? I do this regardless if it's the vice president. Or pre this yes, is indeed. Yes, indeed. You know, and this is just kind of not everybody want to vote and boom, boom, and register. We're doing this regardless. This is what we do. Most definitely. And I think it's, I'm glad that you did it for your young men because, you know, they need to understand it. A lot of young people, I, I'm i 33 years old. A lot of people my age bracket and below are out of loop on civics. So I'm hoping this is a jump start with you are doing for your young men and others will be involved going forward from because we're the next generation of this country is, is my age and below you know so we have to be engaged and involved and people like you and my parents who set me up for it are very key and crucial to our progress moving forward for real coach and so you know the last thing i'll say on that is my challenge isn't uh you know necessarily for people that I, I do believe we need to have as many people uh, 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 registered to vote as we can. But the real challenge for me is, will these same programs, these same coaches and these, you know, all around the country, will they be making the same push 
next fall when there's not a presidential election? Or is it is it not as important to vote then as it is now? It is. Let's just see if we got the same push. And I'll challenge them on this show to do it, Coach. You no, know, I'll challenge them on it because I will do that. Because you know, I, since you know, I'll just tell you one more thing before we move to the next topic. But for me personally, I've decided to use my show for more of a platform. I've lost four sponsors, Coach. You know, and I'm like, it's mighty interesting that I've decided to use my platform for a different reason. I lose sponsors, but it's all good because God's gonna bless me no matter what. But it's awfully funny that hey, four people drop because. I decided to talk about other issues other than the Hawks or the Falcons, the Braves, college basketball, or whatever. <laughs> it's my <Right>. uh, interesting. <laughs> right. I, I, I get it. I know. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Now, Coach, for you, you're in year five at UT Martin, man. Has it flown by as the head man? How's it, has it flown by for you, Coach? I know you, you was an assistant on the Heat Shroyer you there, man. So how has it been, man? Has it flown by that you're going in year five as the head man at the UT Martin? It has. And I think, you know, time flies when you're enjoying what you do. And I enjoy working with young people. I enjoy uh, representing this fine university. Uh, and it, it, it just seems like yesterday, like you just said, I was up here as an associate head coach with my best friend, Heath Schroyer. So um, there, there's something to be said about. There's some uh, truth to it uh, in that you know, you find something you love to do, uh, you don't work a day in your life. So I don't, I don't find this to be work. I find this to be fulfilling and gratifying uh, to see young adults of all ethnicities and creeds and cultures uh, reach their goals on and off the court. And that's what, that's why I, I that's why I do it in particular. You have a unique, I'll say, in Martin is a unique town because it's the school's pretty much the town is, is the school. And so when you're at UT Martin, you got two focuses, academics and basketball, or if you if you play basketball. So your university, your young men have a great opportunity to focus on their games, we talked about it in the past, and, and play for you who demands you play hard because I watch your games on the digital network. Your team always plays hard. You might not win every night, but you play hard and you play committed to what you the scheme you're playing. And I love, love that when I watch your team because I love how they time out, they have, you have their attention. You have those young men early engaged. I want to commend you, Coach, on that and how the job you do with your young men, watching you from afar, of course. I appreciate it. Uh, that's the goal, uh, getting the, 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 the getting a uh, 100% or more than 100% buy-in uh, from the mental and the physical and just putting in a hard day's work. You know, like when they go to, when they go to a job, they're going to ask for a, a, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. And so that's what we do here in our program. Uh, we try to be representative of the culture here. And that's what the culture here is. You know, it's agriculture, it's farming, uh, it's blue, more blue collar than white collar here. Uh, and that's hard work, pride, uh, work ethic, uh, people that uh, have been brought up in, in, in great work structures. And so we try to mimic and mirror the things and the people in the processes that were around. So I'm glad to hear that that you see that in our play and that's what it's about. Yeah, coach, you also had two promotions on, on your staff. You hired Coach Walker as a full-time assistant coach on your staff and uh, Montez Robinson, a former coach at Alcorn State. Talk about what those two will bring to your staff here going forward. You know, they're, 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 they're workers. Uh, Montez, uh, I, Coach Walker's been around me. Uh, he used to play for me, so there's a very good trust factor here. He knows what I expect. He knows how I work, uh, what I want to get done because he's lived it and been through it. He's a great young coach and a great young basketball mind. Montez is a uh, former uh, SWAC uh, Coach of the Year, uh, had a very successful program in Alcorn, and unfortunately, Things didn't go his way in the administration. Uh, they parted ways, but uh, he came off his last year. He had a winning record. And so, uh, you know, I, he's really come in here, taking the bull by the horns in particular on the defensive side of the ball where I was not satisfied. We were poor last year. That's on me. And I've made a concerted effort to improve our defense and get it to where it needs to be so we can contend for a championship. Yes, indeed, because as you know, Coach, the OVC is – there's no easy outs in OVC, no matter who you play. No, sir. No, no, no easy sir. outs. No, sir. 
and I know from coaches I talk to in the league, they always tell me that you do a great job, but they they hate to play you because of the defense you play. Of course, they, they I always say you do a good job, and his defenses he changes it up on you. It's it's rough to play more. It's like the your, your peers definitely speak how they come on the show, coach, and I see it too. That that, that your zones are great, and how you mix them up and play them, and those guys off for sure. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yes, indeed. Now, coach, to talk to us about some who are your so you're your, your key returners, key returners to your to your team, and also your newcomers as well. So I, I listen here in Atlanta can know who to look for on your roster this year, coach. You know what I've done uh, due to this epidemic in this environment. I've kind of changed my format of my roster. I'm carrying 20 guys this year, so I've got 13 scholarship players, and I've also got seven out of state walk ons, and my walk ons had. Uh, multiple Division One offers, they chose to come invest in themselves and pay their own way for this year because you never know what's going to happen. Hopefully, knock on wood, the virus doesn't, uh, you know, get to us too bad or at all, I hope. And if you have some guys that need to quarantine or, you know, you might have – and he's around another guy and he was around this guy in practice, now you got to get rid of eight guys. Well, for me, I still have 12. And so I have to be able to, um, I want to, I don't want to forfeit any games, lose any games. So I kind of went to my background and playing some minor league baseball and made my own farm team. I got 20 guys that can all at any point in time go in and contribute. My returners, obviously, my son, he took his name out of the draft uh, uh, fairly late. He was getting a, garnering a lot of serious interest. Uh, he wanted to come back for one more year. Uh, I'll have him. He graduates next month with his MBA, but he still has two years to play. Um, we have him coming back. He's the first team uh, preseason all-league guy. Um, Hannes Pola has really been in shape. My transfer that got here last year to play, uh, got a waiver around Christmas time. Um, from Oklahoma, he's really been playing well in preseason here. Some of my newcomers, um, uh, Cam Holton, he's a monster. Got him uh, from uh, Florida Gulf Coast Community College. He was a 20 and 10 guy. Um, got a kid out of uh, Cent College of Central Florida named Jerron Williams. Big six, six, uh, six, six wing, about 215, 220. Really skilled. Um, I've got a kid coming. He, he paid his own way. Uh, uh, was uh, averaged eight and six out in the Big West at uh, Riverside. He paid his own way last year, invested in himself. Um, yeah, I, I got so many guys, but just off the top of my head, those are uh, Benny Vienna uh, from um, Albany Tech. He's from Georgia. He was an All-American. Uh, got a kid by the name of, uh, excuse me, um, Dante. Uh, losing my mind. Hold on one second. Let me get my board where I got everybody's name. I'll take your time, Coach. Here we go. John, uh, I'm sorry, I said Don, uh, Jonte Coleman. Uh, he led the country. He made 115 threes in junior college. Uh, got a real special group of freshmen. Uh, Ant Thomas, Anthony Thomas from Baltimore. Uh, he's, he's, he's a 6'8 wing. He's special. Um, you know, just to name a few. I'm really proud of my guys, man. Uh, Really, really proud of this group in that, you know, they're, they're just down here. And think of it like this. You got everything going on. And so this is what really makes me feel good. And you take out, so I only have maybe three or four returners. So 16 guys mm -hmm. committed to me having never met me in my life, like face-to-face, man-to-man, broke red with them, shake their hand. Like, do you know what, what kind of, what it takes for a young man to do that and these young, these young kids to, oh, to, to trust in a coach to do that, to come to Northwest Tennessee where they're not from? They Like, that. These, this is a special group, man. And I'm, I'm really excited and we're working hard and I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing because I really want them to be successful because I'm so thankful that they believed in me in this time in this this time during the ep epidemic. And how was it recruiting via Zoom? I'll ask you about that. I know that's different from, from you. I know you a guy who wants to build bond with guys like you said. How was recruiting via Zoom, showing the guys to campus via Zoom? So how was that process going forward? That's something you'll use going forward here as well. 
I think, you know, it was, uh, it was different, but I think the, the key element is these kids are coming to play for me and coming to play for my, pro my program in word of mouth, a uh, belief system, trusting what other people think of my program. They had to do their own due diligence and talk to players. I challenge them. You can talk to players that are leaving my program who I'm not bringing back or who are staying. Like there's, there's no, no, uh, what I'll say, no fake in the funk. I'm not hiding anything. I'm an open book. You know, I'm forward with everything. I'm not, you know, I'm, there's, there's, there, there's no games and no tricking anybody. So the, again, the vehicle was different, but you're selling yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm selling my assistance and I'm selling the fact that guys, like you said, this is a particular place where hard work, hard work and, and, and having a great work ethic is championed here in this community at this university and guys get better. And you have to be focused because there's only two things you can really do here. There are no clubs. We don't have a pro team. Uh, you can go to school, get a, get, a, get a fantastic degree, and you can play ball. Yes, indeed. And you know what, Coach? I know your men in Atlanta would love to play for you, man, because I tell them about you. And I try to help out guys. I know. I try to tell them, hey, check out Martin. I know it's you know, a little it's skill part of Tennessee, but it's worth it. Work, give them a look. You know, I tell them all the time. Give them a look. I got three, guys, three new guys here from the Atlanta area. So, yeah, I've told guys to check you out because, I mean, give him a chance. He'll have your back. He comes on coach you hard. He's on Roger hard. He's going to be there for you when you need him. So I've told guys that about you because I can see, I've, I've talked to you multiple times. I've seen you guys play. So I, I believe in you and your program wholeheartedly. And I've definitely sold to anybody who asked me about you. I appreciate that, man. I really do. That means a lot. No doubt. And that's what I got for you, Coach, this. I know, you know, I know you got to play all those guaranteed games and the non-conference games. So how was that going to go for you guys this year, starting two weeks later and trying to, you know, deal with quarantine in different states and different things like that? How is that going, trying to schedule these games before you get into OVC play here, coming up here, did it, did it here real soon? Well, as, as of right now, I've been fortunate enough. I'm not going to – I only have to go on the road and leave campus one time uh, to go play a guaranteed game. That was a, a conscious effort that I made. I don't want to, I'm not getting on a plane. We're not going to get on a plane and uh, be in hotels. And I'm trying to avoid staying overnight, just trying to be as safe as I can be, uh, yet put together, uh, I think I've put together a real, real uh, good schedule that will prepare us for that OVC. A good thing about your location in Martin, you can kind of go to Nashville, Cookville, down to Jacksonville may be a little tricky, but, but most of the schools you play while well, within a good busting distance and getting back in one day and one night. Thank God for that. Yeah, this, this is a good bus league, especially when it comes to conference. So you don't have to get on a plane. And, uh, you know, uh, thank goodness, you know, that uh, we have all – we only have – as of right now, things could change. Um, out of conference, uh, we only have one uh, bus trip that we got to go down to Ole Miss and play. More definitely. Kermit Davis, my guy, Kermit Davis. So, yeah, <laughs> it'll be a good matchup for sure. It'll be a good matchup for you and him. I know he got some zones as well, so I know it. it'll be a good battle for sure. Well, no doubt. Coach Stewart, man, good to always catch up with you, Coach. It's always good to talk to you. We're doing this time of year, man. I'm, I'll be watching you guys closely as always, cheering for you and hoping you guys do well with, with you, and your, you and your roster and your staff, man. Tell Montez I said what's up. I, I'm, I'm glad he's landing with you. Okay. I, I appreciate it, man. And you do an unbelievable job. It's a pleasure to be on your show and, uh, you know, talk with you. And thanks for all you doing the good, uh, the good words you're putting in for my program. I appreciate that. Anytime, Coach. You be safe, man. Hope to talk to you down the road, buddy. Okay. You too. Take care. All right. All right. It's Anthony Stewart on the Boss Man Show.